Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the live lesson. We are here with Chris Waronke once again. Hey, guys. Good and, to see you again. Yeah. You was here just the last lesson as well, and we're going to talk about breakbeats today. It's going to be a ton of fun. Get your questions yep. in. Um, it's going to get funky. What is a breakbeat, anyway? Okay, so good question. A breakbeat, because I was wondering that for the longest time yeah. myself. You know, been hearing about breakbeats for a long time. Um, a breakbeat is where um, the music will break in the song, hence the term breakbeat, and the beat will carry on. Okay, so this can happen really anywhere in, the, any, anywhere in the track. It's sometimes the intro, sometimes it's the bridge or after the bridge, uh, sometimes it's the outro. Okay, so it's not always in the same place. Um, and that's a breakbeat. The drums just carry on playing the groove. Uh, it's not like a jazz break where the, where the drummer will take a solo, right? Yeah. It's more of just keeping that groove going. And uh, do you guys notice anything today that's different besides my hair? And your shirt. And my shirt, yeah. Got some color happening, got some funky shoes. Uh, the thing that's different is... Yeah. Yeah, there's no toms on the kit. You guys won't be needing your toms today. Well, there is one tom, but... There's a floor tom. That's just for there's fun. No, there's no rack toms, I should say. Yeah. We actually had the kit set up without any toms on there. It looked kind of... Kind it looked of, weird. It looked weird with a big I'll, rack. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I sat down <laughs> here and, you know, it is kind of weird without the rack toms, but yeah. without the floor tom, it's just too weird. Totally. Yeah, <laughs> so I totally. had to set up the floor tom. Cool, um, man. But yeah, we won't be needing any toms today uh, for what we're doing here. It's all just all about the groove. It's just kick, hat, snare. Um, pretty much for the whole thing, yeah. And the song that you just played along to um, as we started this lesson, that's a play-along from the it's bass drum Secrets. I believe it's a uh, drum and bass play-along? It is a drum and bass play-along. And drum and bass and breakbeat, do those yeah. go hand-in-hand? Hand or they, what's do. The, yeah. they do, yeah, they, they, they do. Um, drum and bass, uh, basically breakbeat is almost like a style of music now. Um, mm -hmm. And breakbeats have been commonly used in drum and bass music because... Um, what they would do is a DJ or a producer would sample uh, a breakbeat from back in the day, uh, you know, from the 60s or 70s, and use it in, um, you know, contemporary music, and sometimes alter it, speed it up, you know, um, to ridiculous tempos. Cool. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of guys playing really fast breaks nowadays, uh, fast breakbeats like Jojo Mayer or Johnny Rab, uh, because they've been listening to the electronic stuff, which has the sampled original breakbeat sped up, and then they're reverse engineering that and learning it on the drum kit. Yeah, they're drumming. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's definitely neat. Cool. Well, enough talking. Let's just get right on into it here. Sure. Okay, so number one on the PDF chart here. Um, well, first of all, I should mention that these all have 16th note subdivisions. Okay, so make sure you guys are comfortable with your, uh, with your 16th notes. Um, we're going to take it easy here. Don't, uh, I hope you don't get scared away thinking this is all going to be like Jojo Mayer 300 BPM stuff because it's not. <laughs> uh, we're going to explore, like, you know, the origins of the breakbeat and go back in time a little bit here. So this stuff, I guarantee you guys, you'll, you're going to be able to play pretty much everything here um, as long as you take it slow. And we're going we're gonna to start at 80 BPM, which is, which is pretty slow for some of these. You know, I think that most of these grooves are above 80 BPM uh, on the original recordings. Okay, so without fur further ado here, the first one is a uh, drumbeat by Clyde Stubblefield, who was one of James Brown's drummers, uh, pioneer of the breakbeat, mm -hmm. great funk drummer. And uh, he played this break on a track called Unwind Yourself uh, by, by an artist named Marva Whitney. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty common beat. I'm sure you've heard this before. This has been sampled a lot. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty familiar groove, even if you haven't heard the uh, original song that it's from. So we're going to play that one for you right now. Cool. Sounds good. You've heard that before somewhere, haven't you? Oh, of course I have. There's, there's yeah. that, that I've heard more than, well, not more than anything, but there's a lot of yeah. songs that you can hear that on. Yeah, exactly. It works well with a lot of different types of music. Um, Do you want to speed that up and play Yeah, I'll speed quicker? that up because, you know, nowadays when you hear breakbeats, they're pretty fast. Um, so you can just take up the tempo on this to anything you want, really. And uh, you might hear it nowadays in a, in a drum and bass track, something like this. And at that last tempo there, I don't remember the name of the track, but I think it's a, the, the group Pendulum. I think I heard yes. that groove in a Pendulum song yes. pretty fast. Yeah. 
But it's a classic groove. And nowadays they're just speeding stuff like that up. Well, they've been doing that for a while. But uh, nowadays you see a lot of drummers doing that on the acoustic drum set versus, you know, producers or DJs using the drum machines. I was going to say, what is the one thing you should be looking out for when you're practicing this beat? Because you can play this at a slower tempo and it would yep. fit into a completely different style of music. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, what you want to do is just watch out for the ghost notes. You know, watch mm -hmm. out for the dynamics because, as you guys can see, the ghost notes are in the brackets there. Uh, anything that doesn't have a ghost note is going to be an accent. So watch out for your ghost notes. And also the kick pattern. The kick is going to be on the one, the and of three. So it's like one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Okay, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's basically the foundation of the groove right there. And uh, now you can also, you can keep your hi-hats straight as well. Um, and this goes for almost the whole page. You know, you can either do a accented, accented eighth note, or you can just keep the same even dynamic. I mean, this is how you would usually hear it if it was uh, done by a drum machine, you know. Yeah, and that can sometimes be a challenge to do, especially at quicker tempos, you know, because personally I'm used to playing with more dynamics on the hi-hats, you know, especially at quicker tempos, right, because you get that, that push-pull thing happening. But it's kind of neat to hear some of these with the, right, just that straight, even hi-hat, very uh, drum machine-esque. Totally. Yeah. Can you just play that again with the, the uh, push-pull so we can hear the difference between yeah. the two? Yeah, so you can hear a bit of a, a difference there. Um, one thing I will just say, Kyle, can you turn Chris's mic up a bit? We have a couple people in the chat saying it's a little bit quiet. Um, so if you can do that, that'd be great. No okay, sorry. You guys hear me all right? Yeah. Loud and clear? All right. Okay, so moving on. Uh, number two, this is just a variation um, that I kind of came up with, sort of based on what I just played here, the Clyde's double field groove. Uh, now, what you'll notice on number two is that there's a ghost note right off of the, uh, the downbeat. So right after the one, you have to play a ghost note on your snare, so watch out for that one. And then also the last snare drum is uh, syncopated, so it's going to be on the and of four instead of the four. So you get this funky kind of uh, feel happening here. Um, so this one would be like... Okay, so watch out for that last snare. Uh, oh, smart beat. Let's do it. Yeah. 80 beats per minute. Here we go. There we are. So there you have it. This one's a little bit more syncopated. Now the thing about breakbeats is that they usually are syncopated and they're you know, almost always subdivided by 16th notes. Uh, this one's a lot of fun to play just because it's different. You, know, you have the ghost note off of the, uh, the downbeat, then you've got that syncopated uh, backbeat at the end, the end of four. So you can have a lot of fun with this one. Let's, uh, should I speed this one up? Yeah, let's see what it sounds quicker, like. Yeah. Yeah. So have fun with that one. That one's pretty funky. Cool. And it's only going to get funkier. You, is that a promise? It's a promise. We're going to get we're going to get really funky. You All know, right. So, Number so, 3. So, so uh, watch for the changes and try to keep up as they say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what movie that's from? Go for it. Back to the Future. Which one? Uh, I think it's the first one. Oh. <laughs> Where he plays guitar. Yeah, you know yeah, the yeah. Johnny B good yeah, scene. Yeah, the Johnny B good. Anyways, enough movie trivia. Moving on to number 3 here. Um, you might have heard of this drummer, Steve Ferrone, played with uh, Tom Petty, but back in the day he played in a group called Average White Band. Uh, now this groove is from a song called Schoolboy Crush. 
And the interesting thing about this groove is that uh, you know, rather than playing the snare drums on the uh, 16th notes, like the E's and the U's, like a lot of funk drummers would be doing, he decided to play the kick drum on the 16th notes. So it's kind of like, you know, an interesting approach to uh, the break beat. Okay, so this one, this one's pretty straightforward, guys. Just make sure you keep your bass drums off of the hi-hats. Okay, so the kick drums here are going to be on the A uh of two and the E of three. Okay, so whereas before we had, look at number one, we have the snares, right, on the uh, two E and uh, So the A of two and the E of three, now we've got the kicks on the A of two and the E of three. Okay, so watch out for that. Let's, uh, well, I, I heard his name is Dennis now. His smart, name is Smart Dennis. beat technology. Let's okay, let's fire up Dennis and I'll uh, we'll show you guys how to do this one. So that's all there is to it, right? That one's pretty straightforward. Um, you can try speeding it up. Um, this one, you know, the ones that have the, the syncopated kicks, they don't always sound great sped up, though. I find that the ones with the more ghost notey type snare drum stuff sound great sped up. But nonetheless, I'll speed this one up a bit. So it's still pretty funky. You've got those, you know, syncopated kicks happening there. Mm -hmm. Be really cool if you can even, uh, obviously I'm not going to ask, but uh, uh, put you on the spot, but mm -hmm. to, act, to use bass drum dynamics in there to maybe ghost those a little bit. Do, do, bop, 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 bop. On the first or the second kick on the, in, in the double? On the 16th, on the, on the two 16th there. Yeah, uh, to but, but you mean like, like but then again with break beats, ghost, ghost one and then accent the other one? Yeah. Well, let me try that, so. Yeah, it really gives it that kind of push. Yeah, totally. Yeah, good cool. idea. Dave's getting funky over here, yeah, spicing I'm it up. Trying to trying to throw some little Cajun in there totally. every now and then. I appreciate that. I'm always up for the spice. All right, so uh, number four. Well, speaking of spicing it up, we're going to spice it up with number four here. This is a variation I came up with uh, based on groove number three. And this one has, uh, you know, an extra kick drum, and it also has an extra couple of snares in there. So... Um, yeah, let's uh, let's try this one out. So, kick, kick. so ghost note right at the end there on the uh, four E and uh, the uh, of four. Um, oh, Dennis, I almost forgot about you. You were looking at the monitor in a in a strange way there, Dave. What was going on? <clears throat> I was trying to see if that one of those snares in the beginning were supposed to be ghosted, but it wasn't. Oh, okay. So it cool. sounded great though. Thanks. Play this one quicker. Okay, so this one a little bit faster would be. getting funky in here. All right, moving on to number five. Hey, Steve Gadd. Okay, if you guys don't know Steve Gadd, look him up. G-A-D-D, -D, the godfather of groove. Okay, so he is responsible for this next groove, this next break beat I'm about to show you. This happens in the song Take Me to the Mardi Gras uh, by Bob James. Okay, now this one has a lot of ghost notes happening, so check out the uh, transcription here. Okay, so what you have to do is watch out for the ghost notes uh, on the and a uh, of two, because there's two in a row there. So, so basically what you have to do is go. They're also at the end of the bar as well, right? So on the and a uh, of four. Um, 
it's similar to a controlled stroke, which we're going to get into a little bit later on here, but you just have to make sure to try to keep those uh, ghost notes down. Right, pretty quiet. Okay, so let's uh, try this one with Dennis, the menace. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's a great groove, uh, and if you can speed that up, go for it, because it sounds great. So uh, What was the tempo that they usually played that? Well, that's Steve Gadd. So I think that. the album tempo for that one, uh, the recorded tempo is 104. 104? 104 BPM. We just did it at 80, so that was pretty slow. So, can, yeah, I, put so a, can I put a click on that 104 and get you yeah, to play that? That'd be great. That'd be great, because I, yeah. I really want to see, because uh, I know the song. Okay, oh, okay, right on. Yeah, and guys, if you're not familiar with these songs, I don't expect most of you to be familiar with them because, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, I wasn't familiar with a lot of these. I mean, they're before my time. They're from the late 60s to the mid 70s. But uh, go and YouTube them because it's really fun to hear these grooves uh, in context and you'll hear exactly, you know, where um, they're used as a break, you know, where the break beat occurs in each one of these grooves or in each one of these songs. Here we go. Turn it up a bit. I got max volume here. Oh, you do? Kyle, if you want to give some more click That's track. okay. That's okay. That's okay. So... There you go. Cool. That's Steve Gad tempo right there. Yeah, fun groove to play. Lots of ghost notes. Uh, this one's a bit of a challenge at first, but take it slow, uh, even slower than 80 BPM if you guys need to. Um, yeah, because this is a great groove. Oh, and I should mention this. With a few of these break beats, um, sometimes the break is different lengths in a song, right? Sometimes it's just a couple of bars. Sometimes it's four. Sometimes it's eight. So some of these might be eight bar uh, breaks, which are pretty long, um, in which case I've just sort of taken the first bar and... Uh, we're looping that. Okay, so I think there's a little bit more variation to this one is what I'm, what I'm getting at. Cool. Which Sounds you might good. hear if you listen to the uh, original recording. Okay, so how are we doing with time over there? Oh, we're, we're, we're golden. We're golden? Okay, yeah. awesome. All right, so this next one here, uh, this one is a variation I came up with as well. And this one's interesting because there's only one bass drum in the bar. Okay, and that's right on the downbeat. Don't need any other kicks. It's gonna be all your hands doing the work there, your left and your right hands. Um, some ghosting in this one as well. So this one would go. Okay, so watch out for this because you actually start your ghost notes in between the hi-hat pattern there, in between the eighth notes. You gotta go. Right, so. So watch out for that on the, uh, it's right off the three. Three and four and. Okay, let's uh, get Dennis going there. We'll show you guys how to do this with smart beat technology. So smart. Okay, so that one's a lot of fun. Um, I think this one's great to speed up as well because it really gives your uh, left hand a workout, you know, with all the uh, syncopation happening in the ghost notes. Um, as with most of these grooves, keep your accent on the two and the four, you know, make sure that that is very distinguishable between the, uh, the non-accented notes, the ghost notes, you know, so you want to go really have contrast there. I'm usually hitting the uh, rim at the same time as the head, you get a really nice pop out of the snare. Uh, a lot of these funk drummers, uh, especially back then, you know, they weren't hitting the drums very hard at all. Uh, they were pretty laid back. Um, 
So you don't make sure you guys aren't flailing your arms around too much when you're playing these grooves. Keep it really controlled and keep it pretty low to the snare drum, right? Because there's a lot of ghost note action happening. So you always want to be able to pull off those ghost notes whenever you need them. So uh, I'll speed this one up for you guys. Uh, Faster. Okay, so notice how my arms aren't really coming up to here. I'm keeping it all like pretty low and controlled so I can play those quick ghost notes. Cool. Let's cool. Move on, number seven. Moving on to number seven. Okay, the drummer's name uh, on this one is Earl Young. And this is from a song called Chinese Chicken by Duke Williams. And this has what is known as a control stroke. Now, a control stroke is where you hit an accent, you control the rebound to get a ghost note immediately afterwards. So it's going to be on a 16th afterwards. So what you guys want to do is practice maybe using this whipping motion, get your accent, and utilize the rebound to get that ghost note right afterwards. See, it's on the way up. So just as I'm coming back up for, you know, another snare accent, I'm pulling out that ghost note. Okay, so that's a controlled stroke. It's almost just like a controlled bounce, you know, because the stick wants to go, right? Kind of wants to bounce there. So you're just controlling it so you just get uh, one little ghost note out of it. Okay, so, oh, the other thing too is that this one has a ghost note right off the downbeat, much like uh, number two did. So it's going to go, okay, so. Okay, uh, you want to try this one with Dennis? Yeah. I'll show you the control stroke here. Sounds good. One thing I'll add to this is that it's so important, guys, that you make sure that your ghost note right after your hit is the same volume as every other ghost note, or it's just going to sound like there's three different strokes in there. Yeah. Ghost, yeah. almost like a medium stroke, and then a full stroke. Yeah, very good point. You basically want to have two volumes going here uh, with your left hand. You want to have the accent, which is going to be loud, and you want to have the ghost note, which is going to be quiet. Uh, almost as quiet as you can physically play it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, make sure your ghost notes aren't coming up too high. That's a tip for playing ghost notes a bit quieter with a bit more finesse. So make sure your ghosts aren't, aren't like... Uh, well, here, I'll play it with uh, the ghost notes kind of exaggerated. So that would go like... Right, you don't want to play it like that because that sounds very rigid, very mechanical, yeah. you know, and there's not enough dynamics there. So you definitely want to keep your ghost notes down. I'm just maybe like a centimeter off of the drum head when I do those ghost notes. Cool. Yeah, centimeter or two. Yeah, we should measure that one day with some sort of special drum, drum device. Some sort, of, <laughs> some sort of measuring. Stroke height, yeah. yeah. Have yeah. you done this one fast yet? Oh, yeah. this one. Yeah, uh, speed this one up a bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Play that all day. 
<clears throat> well, it's unfortunately, we, it's 4.30. And we oh, got, we okay. got four, uh, what were we on, number seven? So we got eight, nine, 10, and 11 to teach. I oh. also got a bunch of questions. And I also yeah. need to teach that really cool Phil. Before the lesson, Chris did this one Phil. Um, it was the Chris Warwinky special, he calls it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm in the studio. I turned my head. I'm like, oh, he's got to teach that. So I want to get to that, too. So let's move on to So we might have here. a bonus Phil for you guys. We might, yes. So don't, don't go anywhere. All right. Okay, let's, let's keep moving on here. Uh, the next groove, the next break beat is an example uh, of a pullout, okay? So we've got a controlled stroke and a pullout. Those are two techniques you need to play break beats uh, effectively. So a pullout is where you do the ghost note before the accent. So it's kind of like the opposite of a controlled stroke. So it is... So you want to make sure you get a snap of the wrist for your accent right after the ghost. Used to playing shuffles, you you might be already getting the hang of that that type of motion. Okay, so this one. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, so you want to go and use your pullouts. Okay, Dennis, yes. I'm ready for you. And I'll want, I want to add to this, number eight in particular, even if you guys don't want to ever play break beats or don't even care about any of these beats on here, number eight is an amazing beat and exercise to really work your left hand. Not very often do you play a ghost note followed immediately a 16th value after with an actual accented note. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's really good. It works on your doubles and your left hand usually is the weaker one for everyone. Yeah, it's so. a lot of fun to try to accent the second note of your doubles, even with the right hand, but yeah. especially with your left hand, so you can so you can do grooves like this when you need to. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll, you're you're going to hear this a lot in funk drumming, especially old school funk drumming. Um, you know, you'll hear it, you'll, you'll hear it in a few other places as well, but it's most mostly predominant there. So I'm going to speed this one up a bit. All right. Cool. Moving on, because yeah. I know we're. Uh, Pressed. Pressed for time here. Okay, number nine. This is pretty cool. This is a variation of a Bernard, a Bernard Purdy uh, breakbeat. Okay, from an uh, Aretha Franklin tune uh, called Rock Steady. Okay, so now we're going to start using some open hi hats in our breakbeats here. It's going to sound pretty cool. Oh, there's also a little tiny thirty second note. Uh, you can do a drag there for those two ghost notes. That would be a drag. So just a quick double bounce before the accent. Okay, so you want to make sure you're going left, left, right for that. Unless you're so, left-handed so, drummer, then you want to go right, right, left. Gotcha. So there's no sticking mentioned in the in the sheet music, but mm -hmm. for that group yeah. of three, it is left, left, right. It's not all yeah. three. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When I was practicing, I was You like, thought it was with one that? hand. Yeah. yeah, so Dave's sitting there trying to do it with one hand, yeah, getting I'm a good like, workout. Yeah, this is going to be a good yeah. advanced lesson, but... All right, let's try it. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to keep it uh, somewhat simple on this one because this is just an introduction to break beats. Hopefully yeah. later on, we'll sort of, you know, take to the next level. Totally. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's try this one with Dennis right off the bat. Faster. Faster. Okay, so that one's a lot of fun. So I would typically like, you know, maybe end a phrase like that. I, I probably wouldn't keep that loop going. I would probably use that as the tail end of a break beat, you know, on the fourth bar uh, out of four, something like that. You know, like for example, I'll just show you what I mean because the cool thing is, with, with all of these breakbeats, you can mix and match them. Come up with your own uh, variations of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a break. So basically, uh, let's, let's just put this together with number one.
See what I mean? Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I encourage you guys to get funky with these with these break beats and mix and match them. Uh, do we have time for questions, or you want me to keep no, moving let's, on? No, uh, we'll do questions all at the end. We've got 10 and 11. 11's going to be a good challenge. It's so going to be a good one. Let's go on. You don't want to miss that one. Uh, okay, hey, next up. This is actually probably the most sampled uh, break beat or drum beat of all time. This is the Amen break by, uh, played by Greg Coleman on a recording by a group called uh, the Winstons. I think it was called Amen Brother was the song. It was actually a B-side to their single. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So the most sampled uh, break beat or drum beat of all time is uh, from a B-side. Can you believe that? That's this, crazy. This has showed up, like, this has shown up everywhere. Yeah, throughout the years. Okay, so this one is, uh, watch out for the uh, 16th note kicks here. So you're going. Okay, so let's, let's show you this one with Dennis. Fire it up. That's the uh, Amen break. Actually, you know what? As a matter of fact, there's even a documentary about this break beat. What's it called? Uh, I, I, I don't know the name of the documentary, but you can YouTube it. Just look up. Uh, it might just be called the Amen break. I don't know. Just look that up on YouTube. I know what I'm uh, doing tonight. A, yeah, the Amen yeah. break documentary. It's about 20 minutes long or half an hour or something. It's all about how famous this groove, this break beat is and how it's still used today. And that was recorded at what, like 137, I think it was? 137, yeah. Yeah, let's hear should, it at a faster we try? tempo. Okay, yeah. so that one goes. Uh, notice how there are no ghost notes. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah. yeah, there's no ghosts on the snare. I was also going to ask you if you wanted to do number 10 and number 9 like you did with number 1 and number 9. Sure. So, okay. Let's do that. Yeah, those work uh, quite well together. Awesome. Good call, Dave. Yeah. Oh, you know, I heard it. I heard yeah, it. Yeah, you heard it. Yeah. I'm a producer. Okay. Oh, there you go. He's got the ears. Now, number for 11, this one here. I, I practiced this one. I was, or not yeah. practiced, but I played it before we started the lesson. And this one's a good challenge. Really good challenge for waking up your left hand. And oh, getting it totally. Uh, I mean, it's, first of all, it's all 16th notes with one hand on the hi-hat. Now, you can play these accented or unaccented. Uh, this is also like a heavily sampled groove. This is uh, the Funky Drummer, which is a James Brown track. Again, by Clyde Stubblefield, the same guy who came up with the first beat that we did today. Uh, now, this is an infamous beat. I say infamous because it's hard to play. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was at a Jojo Mayer clinic, and somebody asked him to play the Funky Drummer. And he said, okay, and he sat down and he played it. Uh, and first of all, it's, a pr it's, it's, it's pretty quick. Like the tempo on the recording is, is, is pretty upbeat for this type of thing with like with 16th notes with one hand. Anyways, Jojo Mayer said um, it took him years to be able to perfect that groove. I'm not kidding. He said years. Really? Yeah. I, I don't doubt and, it. It's and a I tough even, groove. And I even heard Stanton Moore say the same thing. So yeah. this, this is one that, you know, it's going to stick with you guys for a while. Uh, Dave and I are still working on it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll play it for you guys. Basically, let me just r run through it quickly. So it's... Okay, so you have to do your uh, pull-out, and you have to do a couple, of, a couple of ghost notes there. The tough thing about this one is that each one of your ghost notes is going to line up with a 16th note on the hi-hat. There's no more ghosting in between hi-hats. Now you're doing it completely in unison. That's why this groove is so difficult. Uh, okay, let's fire up Dennis. We'll try this at 80 BPM.
it is. Now, can you play that much faster? Because that's pretty quick right there at 80 beats per minute. It is, it is, um, it is actually pretty quick. I don't know doing it a little bit quicker, but... It is pretty quick at 80 BPM, guys, so take it down to 60 when you start this groove, because even at 80 BPM, which is 21 BPM under the actual recorded tempo, it's pretty quick. Yeah. I'll try to speed it up a bit here, so... That's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Here's the other thing, though. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit simplified. The original breakbeat has a couple of open hi hats uh, in very awkward places. Of course it does. So, so just yeah, when you thought you got it, yeah. there's another step to this one. Uh, do I have time to just mention those quickly? Okay. Just Go for ma it. maybe take note of this if you guys can print out those PDFs. Uh, the first open hi hat is going to be with the first ghost note. So, okay, right there. Okay, the second open hi-hat is with your very last bass drum of the bar. So right before the double ghost notes at the end of the bar. Okay, so let me try that. So it'll go... It's pretty tough. No kidding. You get the idea. Yeah. It's very difficult. That's a good challenge for you guys. So once there. you guys get the funky drummer, put in those open hi-hats. Uh, just to let everybody know in the chat who's on drumming right now, and I guess it doesn't matter if you're watching this on the archive, but the link has been posted for that six minute loop. And the title on YouTube, if anybody wants to YouTube it, just type in video explains the most important six second drum loop. That's what you need to type in if you want to watch it. It's a, apparently it's a good watch. Oh, that's people, the documentary. That's the documentary. Oh, people are nice. saying it's uh, uh, great to watch. So yeah, check that out. Let's uh, go through some questions here. Sure. Yeah. That's cool with you. And then yeah. at the end. That's why I'm here. Exactly. And at the end, we're going to get you to uh, not only play us out with that drum and bass track again, if you don't mind. Okay. And then I also want to get you to teach that fill. Okay? Oh yeah, the fill. The so fill. <laughs> uh, let's just go through some of these questions here. This first one is from Dustin Jacobson. Says, why no rack toms? Okay, hey Dustin, um, good question because we don't really need them for any of these grooves. Uh, in fact, they didn't really use too many toms, you know, on any of these funk tracks back in the day. I mean, breakbeat drumming comes from old funk drumming. So uh, they had pretty small drum kits and it was all about the groove, kick, snare, hats, you know. Um, these guys could probably just do gigs with, with those three things and get away with it. They didn't really... There weren't any tom fills. And you know, the thing about the break beats is that some other types of music in the break, there would be a fill or a drum solo, uh, probably incorporating toms. With break beats, you're just keeping the groove going. It's all just kick, snare, and hi-hat. So we just didn't have a need for any rack toms today Yeah. with what we're working on. So the next question. Oh, also, sorry, yeah. Dave. Also, I wanted you guys to see what I was doing with my left hand with all the uh, ghost note stuff. That's part yeah. of the reason as well. Didn't yeah. want toms to be in the way from the... Tom uh, blocking, yeah. yeah. Instead, we have a big rack blocking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one is a gear-related question. We have two gear-related questions here. Cool. Uh, both of these ones, one's from Dustin again. The other one is from... Uh, both of them, actually. They're just asking about your hi-hats. Asking what kind of hi-hats yeah. uh, hi are these? They sound great. They're 13-inch, are they? No, or? they're 12s. So oh. they're tiny little hi-hats. And these hi-hats are made to, to play break beats and electronic music. Uh, they're called Remix. Zildjian Remix sound effect hi-hats. Tiny little 12-inch hats. They sound almost electronic-y, don't they? I love they? them, yeah. They're great, yeah. Gavin Harrison also uses these. Uh, if you have his DVD, he's using these hi-hats quite a bit. Which one, Rhythmic Illusion? The first one, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Jim wants to know, I know you've mentioned it already, but would you mind redefining, or sorry, defining Breakbeat for me one more time. Yeah, sure. So breakbeat is, okay, it's the point in the song where all the instrumentation stops, like the melody line stops and the drums just carry on. Uh, they don't do a crazy drum solo, they just keep the groove going. That's a breakbeat. And this can happen anywhere in a song. It can happen in the intro, it can happen in the bridge, it can happen in the outro. Um, these various breakbeats, maybe I'll go in the archives and I'll point out where exactly in these songs the break happens. Uh, but that's basically a break beat. Yeah. So it's unaccompanied drumming. Or if there is accompaniment, it's just very sparse, like horn shots or a bass line. It's not the actual head of the song or the melody. 
Excellent. Yeah. Great description. April Singer asks, hey Dave, hey Chris, hey April. Hey April. She wants to know, people are asking a lot about that snare, and that's a good point. It's a mm -hmm. brilliantly, it's a brilliant finish. It looks awesome. But uh, explain a little bit about the snare. Okay, so this snare is a four by 14, so it's very shallow, uh, DW brass snare. And it is... Do you want to look it up? Uh, sure. Show them maybe how, how it looks, because I know it's right below okay. the, the camera angle there. So there you guys go. That's uh, solid brass. Uh, it's very articulate. It will pick up every little detail, uh, every single little note. And uh, it has great range. The ghost notes sound nice and clear and crisp. And it has a killer uh, rim shot. Uh, funny thing about this one, though, is... Let's see if you guys can check that out. Look at the, uh, the throw. Did you notice that, Dave? I hadn't. What does it say? Oh, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, really? it, it's a tie throw because no I had Ray Ayotte put a new throw on it for me because my DW one kept popping off. Uh. It kept opening and closing on me. So thanks, Ray Ayotte, for, uh, for doing this. So that's that's uh, customized. Oh, yeah, totally. It's customized. Cool. cool. Nathan uh, ben Benitez says, uh, would, uh, when would doing ghost notes near the rim of the snare be better than doing... I guess he means would doing ghost notes yeah. at the rim of the snare be well, better for volume control? Uh, no, it wouldn't be better because if you're doing ghost notes near the rim of the snare, it's a lot more ringy, right? So That's your ghost true. notes are going to have this sustain to them that you don't want. For example, versus... You guys hear a difference there? Maybe if you're playing so fast that you need more tension to get a better rebound, then you could do some ghost notes there. But let me just play something for you guys so you see what I'm saying, or hear what I'm saying. So it sounded different. Plus, I had to adjust my technique and, you know, my <laughs> positioning of my whole arm basically to, to pull off those ghost notes by the rim or you'd have to do it here so it's a lot of unnecessary movement you want to just keep your playing position the same and just work on your dynamics totally yeah okay we have another question here from this one's from big dog 850 big dog he says yeah how's it going he says I, a lot of i see a lot of drummers having trouble with their feet to do an exercise um is there anything that you know that you could do to make your feet faster and stronger in relation to break beats, obviously. Okay, yeah. Um, what you can do is just isolate, first of all, isolate your feet. Um, I remember Peter Wildor saying, who is, uh, he's a great drummer um, from Sweden. He said that there was a point in time where he just completely isolated his legs and his feet and only practiced that stuff. So basically, just simple exercises. You can just do singles, uh, you know, at various tempos, try to speed it up gradually do sort of dotted notes uh, and you can you know also try some different uh, techniques as well um, you know you can do this with double kick pedal or just your hi-hats even stuff like you know just alternating try to get that at a quick tempo start doing doubles you have to treat your feet like as if they were your hands. You know, I've even heard of guys playing rudiments with their feet, paradiddles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Sure, you've done that before, Dave, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So basically, just isolate your feet and practice with your feet the same way you would with your hands. Um, I think that's probably the best way to do it. But actually, Dave, you and I were talking about this the other day because I said, hey, uh, you got pretty fast double kicks for the double bass boot camp, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you were training hardcore, right? It's with your legs. It's since there's such big muscles, you really need to m maintenance them. I guess you yeah. can say. And if you True, slow, yeah. if you stop, I mean, this is really for building speed. If you slow down, it kind of takes you a while to get back up there. But uh, yeah, for yeah. a while there, especially before the bass drum secrets, I was just woodshedding my legs, like getting in uh, just straight sixteenths. That's yeah, all just I would keeping do. time with your with yeah, your hands, right? Just keeping time. Yeah. That's a, I obviously I was using double bass, so if you don't have double bass, um, there is other ways mm -hmm. you can do it, even if it's just a uh, single pedal, yeah. and instead of alternating with double bass, alternate yeah. maybe with your hand and your foot. Oh, right. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, just alternate 16th or 8th. Yeah. Yeah. That's another great exercise. And check out different uh, foot pedal techniques. Okay. There's a bunch of them out there. Some might work better for you than others. 
We'll go through a few more questions. Yeah. I'll get you to teach that last little fill for us. Okay. Um, <laughs> April Singer wants to know, hey, where did you get those rock star shoes from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, April. Uh, these are PF flyers. Sorry, socks. Oh. The oh. star socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never, awesome. never mind the snakeskin shoes. It's all about the star socks. Yeah, totally. Those are uh, I think shoes. my girlfriend got those for me. Well, look at so. that. How nice of her. Yeah. This one here is from Ted Ferguson. He says, hey, Chris and Dave. Hey, Ted. Uh, how much do you rely on the rebound to do the 16th on the hi-hat, or is it all wrists or a combination of both? Okay. Uh, 16th on the hi-hats? Oh, so probably the funky probably drummer. Probably the funky drummer, yeah. Okay, there's two ways of doing it. Um, you can either just keep it pretty straightforward, unaccented, kind of sounding like a drum machine. Like, I've heard this groove sampled before. Oh, maybe it was reprogrammed by a drum machine, but the hi-hats were just like this. Okay, so I'm utilizing the rebound neck. I'm using fingers. Usually I would play like this, palms down, and use wrists. I'm grabbing the stick mostly in the back. But if I want that really straight, sort of drum machine sounding 16th, I go up to thumbs up, French grip. And I use fingers, my elbow comes up too, so I can get a, a better leverage there. You know, versus. Right, so it really depends on the sound that you're going for, but if you want just solid straight 16ths, I would recommend thumbs up. You can really use your fingers there. Uh, if you want accented 16ths, definitely palms down using your wrists. Hope that helps. Yes, we get that question quite a bit. Yeah. Push, yeah. pull, finger, straight wrists. Depends you know. on the sound you're going for. Depends right? on the sound you're going for. Depends on... Uh, or the tempo. The tempo too, yeah. very good one. Um, last question we'll do for, for the day. I know we, we always okay. have too many questions on Mondays. Um, right, yeah. Do we, have pretty, did we have a pretty good turnout today? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. Drummer right for on. Jesus says, great lesson, guys. Thank All you. All in caps, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Are you familiar with Stanton Moore? Do you know any of his grooves? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, yeah. I mean, this is where Stanton Moore is coming from. I mean, Stanton Moore studied all these old funk drummers, you know, all these guys that were pioneers in the breakbeats, um, and a lot of Led Zeppelin, John Bonham. And then he kind of put the two together to create his own style, which is great. You know, it's basically all these old funk drummers, Clyde Stubblefield, Jabo Starks, uh, Zigaboo Model East from the Meters. He was really into those guys. And um, also a lot of John Bonham and Led Zeppelin, and he kind of put them together. So it's like a heavy funk sound. Stanton's great. Uh, check out his DVD. He actually does a few of these beats on his DVD. I think he does Funky Drummer and uh, another one. But anyways, I don't know any of his, his own particular grooves uh, from his songs, but uh, a lot of it's coming from what we were doing today. So definitely go over these uh, break beats because that's the foundation of totally. his drumming. Yeah. Cool. Well, do you want to show him the fill? But don't yeah. just show it to them slow first. Play, play. You know what? Beat. I don't even think I can play it slow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Play <laughs> That's one of those fills. Play at the speed. If I can remember it, because I just sort of pulled it out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it was a crossover on the on the floor, Tom. Right? Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks for the questions. Um, I'm going to show you this fill now that I did while I was warming up, and uh, I, I I just I think I just came up with this. Like I made this one up at some point in time. Yeah. So I can't really give credit to anybody else, but. Uh, this one, it's a crossover, so you're going like this between the snare and the floor tom. Play it first, play it first. Oh. Yeah, that, that's how you do it. You'd go like... Um. Yeah, sometimes I like to do a little shot on the hi-hat to end that fill, so. That's what you're doing at the end there. You're just doing a quick double with your foot. And going from your floor tom to your snare to your hi-hat. And the crossover is. Something like that. Was that it, Dave? I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> Something totally. like that. Yeah. Just a big blur of notes. Really. Loving it. Loving it. <laughs> but okay. if you get it, it looks kind of cool, the crossover. I'm trying to find that play along on yeah. here. 
because sure. I think it's been lost. Which one are we doing? The drum and bass? The drum and bass one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Play some drum and bass groove. Give, buy me some time so I okay, can find Okay, yeah, this, for sure. So I can buy like, this Basically, with this play along, what I'm, what I'm doing is more of a contemporary breakbeat style, which just means it's a bit faster um, than some of this funk stuff that it's coming from. Because what happened was funk producers and DJs were sampling this stuff and speeding it up. And then later on, guys like Jojo Mayer, Johnny Rab, all these other cats were like learning that sped up stuff on the acoustic drum set. So I'm just doing a bit more upbeat drum and bass stuff like... Find that track? That's awesome. Yeah, it's Thanks. coming. So okay. we're gonna get you to play out to this track. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you play to it. Um, you get three tempos to choose from. Oh. 120, 160, or 200. What did I do last time? 160. Oh, well, then let's do 200. You wanna do 200? That a boy. Just for fun. That a boy. So thanks for coming out, everyone. Hope yeah. you guys learned something from it. Thanks, guys. Have fun with those uh, break beats. I know uh, you'll enjoy them. Yeah, for sure. And like you were saying, for an extra challenge, maybe try and play them together. Um, add yep. uh, uh, maybe number one to number yep. two. Mix and match them. Exactly. Um, also, up the tempo. We're doing these all at 80 on the uh, demonstrations with uh, Dennis, the smart beat technology. Uh, go up from there because nowadays break beats, they're really fast. You know, guys are always pushing the tempos. So Cool. So speaking of really fast, we're going to do a drum and, drum and bass. bass track at 200 here. 200 beats per minute. I'll just do it all at half time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. See you next time. Bit more click. Whoa, Bill, that's.